Hello, everybody. Welcome to part nine of the course on the Holy Spirit. And in this section, we'll be talking about the symbols and the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. So um, when it comes to symbols, there are some symbols that have been explained in the Bible that are related to the Holy Spirit. So when you see these uh, symbols being mentioned, it's most of the time it's speaking about the Holy Spirit upon a person or operating in a person's life. So the first of them, symbols of the Holy Spirit is oil. So Psalms 92, verse 10. Verse 10, the Bible says, But my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. So anointing is a word related to the Holy Spirit. And when it says you've been anointed with fresh oil, it means the fresh oil of the Spirit. So when you see the word oil used like in this case, it's a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Being anointed with fresh oil doesn't just mean that somebody poured fresh oil on you, but God anoints you with a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. So those are one of the symbols of the Holy Spirit. Another symbol of the Holy Spirit is fire. And we see that in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, the, the Bible says, that was John the Baptist says, I baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me um, is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He would baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes with the baptism of fire. We remember in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, from verse 1, the Bible says um, when there, were, there, there was a sound of a wind and there, was, there were tongues of fire came and sat upon each one of their heads. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit is also a baptism of fire. And the fire there is a symbol of burning for God. It's like you are on fire for God, and it's one of the symbols of the Holy Spirit. It's only the Holy Spirit that gives you that fire to burn in love with God. The next one is a wind. The wind. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse, verse 1 to 4. It says, there was the sound of a rushing mighty wind. The Holy Spirit usually is symbolized as the wind, the wind of God or the breath of God. Um, the next sign there is water. In John chapter 7, verse 37, I like to read this one. John chapter 7. This is Jesus speaking. It says, On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. People could not have access to the Holy Spirit until Jesus was glorified. And he was speaking ahead of time and telling his disciples, He who believes in me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But when he was speaking about rivers of living water, he was not speaking about tangy or purified water. He was speaking about the Holy Spirit. So one of the symbols of the Holy Spirit is water. Another symbol is rain and dew. You can find that in Hosea chapter 6 and 3, which is not different from water. And another symbol is a dove, Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. This is about the only time when the Holy Spirit came upon somebody as a dove. So what is the use of the symbols? The use of the symbols in Scripture sometimes is to, for people who really understand the symbols, for example, if you're having a dream, and in the dream, the rain is falling on you, you can understand from that dream that the Holy Spirit is falling on you. It, it is a time of outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Or you dream, and you find that there's fire around you. It could be illustrating that the Holy Spirit is on you or walking you. So those are just some of the examples of uh, how to use symbols. Now let's talk about the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. Uh, one of them is that He can be quenched. 
that is Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, which says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Do not quench the Holy Spirit of God. Um, when you use the word quench, it has to do with fire. So you see the symbols and the characteristics working together. He can be grieved and he can be quenched. Um, he can be glorified. You can find that in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 14. You can read that on your own. He's gracious. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 28. Um, he's just. He's a spirit of judgment and justice. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 4. He's unselfish and a perfect gentleman. One of the things I love about the Holy Spirit is that he will never force himself on you. He will never force himself on you. The evil spirits do that when you have an open door in your life. They force themselves on you. They oppress you. They suppress you. They possess you. But the Holy Spirit will only come upon you when you ask. That's why the Bible says in Luke chapter 11, from verse 9, it says, Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Anyone who seeks, find. And everyone who, who knocks, the door will be open to you. That your evil, though you're evil, you know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more would the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? So the only time that the Holy Spirit comes upon a person is when you ask and desire the Holy Spirit to come upon you. Number six, he convicts and reproves and convinces sinners of sin. You cannot convict somebody of sin. It is not a, your assignment. It's not your job. Your job is to preach the Holy Spirit, to, to preach the gospel, the good news of the gospel. He's the one who anoints you to tell the world of his sin. If you're supposed to be anointed as a preacher to preach to people and to tell them to repent, it's the Holy Spirit who has to come upon you and to help you to do that. He's mighty, Isaiah 11, verse 2. He's a free and willing spirit, Psalms 51, verse 12. So if you ask him to help you, he would help you. That is why he is there. He's the standby. He's the one called alongside to help. So ask him for help. Whether you need wisdom, whether you need anointing, whether you need strength or grace, if it's something that the Holy Spirit does, he will do that for you. Um, that brings us to the end of this section and see you in the next. Thank you and God bless you.